And welcome back. Up now we have Mr. Topher Cakes running at night at the gates of hell. So when you're ready, Topher, take it away. All right. Uh, I am Topher. This is Night at the Gates of Hell. Everything else can come later. So time will be when I hit play in three, two, one, go. Uh, right off the bat, we got a jump scare. We're going to see this guy between all the levels. I forget how many there are. Oh, wait, there's another jump scare right here. Um, so the game is a zombie game, and we get to shoot him in the head, and you shoot him anywhere else, it won't work. So that's the first tidbit about this. But there's not going to be as much combat as you'll be expecting. Um, first, we are out in some graveyard to go meet some peeps, and we're going to do our first trick right here. Oh, wait, did I miss it already? No, it's up here. Every time that we get to a little loading area where, where there's a cutscene or some text, we can hit escape twice and we get a little bit of extra distance. So just like that, we'll be doing that throughout the run. Um, it saves a little bit of time, maybe, I don't know, fraction of a second each time, whatever. Um, but we are going out here to meet some lady. Um, there will be some very comical boobs in about a minute. So if you are not ready for that, um, be prepared. Um, I completely forgot to practice this little section. I forgot there's actually a trick there where you can interact with her um, before. Whoopsie. Yeah, we don't want to look at this right now. Um, you can actually talk to her um, during the jump scare to trigger that next little section. But when I was practicing, I was like, there's no tricks in this first section. And I completely forgot about that. So apologies there. Um, so she wants us to go get some protection, so we're going back to the car, um, so we can get some action. But not as much action as we're going to be getting later in the run, so if you if you guys are thinking this runs off to a little bit of a slow start, um, don't worry, it's not just you. Um, I think we only have one more set of boobs to look at. But also, for this little section right there, again, you know, like, you want to interact with the car, hit escape twice, do a U-turn, and then start walking back. It's really tricky to do those um, when you have the, oh, what do you call it? When you have to do, like, a turn. But if you're just walking straight, all you have to do is, like, hit escape twice while going forward. So those ones are really easy. The ones where you got to turn or do some weird dimensions, I don't know. Uh, that, that's that kind of strange. This one, though, is actually a big time save. Watch this. So right now, not only are we looking at boobs, but I am walking forwards towards the boobs. Um, I mean, not real, literally, but right when I spawn in, I should spawn right on top of these guys and I'll die immediately. Awesome. So <laughs> this is the only the prologue. So if we die, it's okay. Um, so it's okay if we die there. It's a lot faster than going to the church and doing the rest of this. Um, but yeah, very cool stuff there. Also, I'll try, I'll try my best to look over at the chat. So if there are any questions um, about what's going on or if I missed something, uh, feel free to just let me know. And now we are playing as a different character and we are in an apartment complex. So we need to get a gun and get outside. And as we're about to see right here, the only person with a gun has their little apartment shut down with some kind of security system. So we want to turn the power off to go get the gun and uh, go mess them up. And uh, unfortunately, we need to go, we need a key to go get that. And you're gonna find out this whole entire level is just looking for excuses not to do the things that we need to do. Now, this first zombie is actually different than the rest of the zombies we're gonna see in the game. So we want to trigger him to come out. And once he's about there, we want to go around him. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, for the other zombies, but I want to keep my distance from th that guy because he's very, very dangerous. Um, I have no gun. I need to basically run away from him. But the rest of the zombies, like I said, you know, we're not going to have to worry about them too much. So we got the key to the little electrical thing. Or there's a little, I don't know, janitor closet, whatever they call it down south. Turn it off the power. I turned it back on on accident. Where am I? Hey, that guy spawns in when it's dark. All right, um, so now we can go in here. Very nice place. Excuse me, I need a gun. But yeah, the whole entire point of this mission is to get a gun and get outside. So, uh, average Saturday night for me. We got a gun. 
Now that right there is what I was talking about, how all the zombies, besides that first one, are pretty different. You can actually crouch underneath them and avoid the hitbox. Um, there's actually a really cool trick coming up. So if you guys have played the Resident Evil 1 remake, you know how you have the little tasers and knives where if you get grabbed by a zombie, you will use that item instead of taking damage. This game is just like that. There are little knives that we can pick up off the ground. So if a zombie grabs us, we will use that knife first. Um, but we spawn with zero knives, so if anybody grabs us, we're in trouble. And we want to get grabbed. So once I interact with that wall, the game is like, oh, I need to go get a sledgehammer to break down that wall, right? Um, so I, and the respawn spot, after I um, get grabbed is where the sledgehammer is, but the game still recognizes that I have, um, I have to go get the sledgehammer. We're gonna do this one more time. It's a bit confusing, but I wanted, I wanted to die there so I could respawn back at the sledgehammer and save myself the walk back. Oh no! Wait, what? What? What's going on? Did I kill both of them? I did the exact same thing that I just did in the in the last section, but this time when I respawn, I have a knife. So I wanted to go break down the wall while a zombie was grabbing me. Excuse me. Oh, I have to grab the knife here. I forgot. Um, so now I'm down to zero knives. We do not want knives, right? We want to have zero knives so we can respawn. Um, we can re uh, abuse the respawn mechanic. We're going to do it one more time in this level. And now we're in the little uh, vent shaft. Again, we're just trying to get out of here, right? We have the gun. We just need to get to the elevator and get out of here. So we are almost out. Drop down. We are right at the elevator. And guess what? Elevator broken. It's like the uh, the little ice cream machine at the McDonald's. That's a pretty that's a pretty fun meme for the kids, you know? Uh, ice cream machine broke. So now we are going back to um, the little, what do you call it? The person who had the gun. For some reason, they have a key to the janitor's place to get the schematics. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to go get that key. And we're going to do another one of those um, tricks that I, told, that I mentioned where we will interact and then do a U-turn to get out of here. So we're going to grab the key, hit escape twice, do a U-turn, and we can get a little bit of extra distance. Jump scare moment. All right, now we got the key, and now we can get out of here, but we got to turn the power back on so the elevator will work. I went the wrong way. Excuse me, ma'am. This whole level was so daunting when I was first trying to learn it. There was just so many places to go, so many places to get lost. Um, it is very easy to, act, to like miss a step for this whole thing, but guess what? We got a gun. We got seven bullets. Um, we don't actually need to use them this whole level, but actually, you know what? This is a showcase. I will show off this cool gun because that's how we're supposed to do it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Actually, kill them. Excuse me. Um, I guess I have a little bit of time. I can start to explain the story. Um, there are some cultists and they're the reason that the zombies are all coming out. And you can tell that they're cultists because they look like cultists. We are now being chased down this little hallway with a giant scary monster behind us, which actually I can show. Is he? No, never mind. I'm not going to show him. He's too slow. Ah! And we can also crouch underneath the cultists as well. So just like we were with the zombies, we can crouch right underneath them. We are back in this little area. You see the flashlight that's like moving after the little cutscene starts? That's a perfect illustration of the extra distance that we can get. So we grab the elevator schematics. We can now get out of here. And you know how I mentioned that uh, we're going to abuse that respawn mechanic once more? We have one knife that we had to grab from the... Uh... Oh. Did I get grabbed? Awesome. I think we did it. Wait, what? Oh, no, wait. Did I... Did I... What the hell happened? Did I not have a knife? Oh, man, that stinks. Do I have a knife right now? Let me check. Yeah, I must have not had a knife. I was supposed to have one there, and I was supposed to have that guy attack me during the cutscene, but he didn't. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to show this off because I, you know, it's not gonna save time to do so, but the idea is that I wouldn't have any knives right now, and I would be able to respawn back at the elevator. You know what? It might have actually been faster to do that even with an extra knife. This is, this is quite some distance. 
Anyway, we got the gun. We got our dead girlfriend um, that we heard screaming, and now we're getting out of here. Anyway, we got a little breather right now, so I uh, hope you guys are having fun with this one. That is maybe one of the harder levels in the whole game. We got a really fun little section coming up uh, for the seaside town. Uh, girlfriend came back as a zombie to attack us. You know, you, you can never... <laughs> Uh, you never can never trust women, am I right, fellas? <laughs> anyway, we're done with her. We gotta get out of here. David's thinking straight now. Um, we are going to the seaside town. Also, the text in between levels is only going quickly because some of the nice folks in the indie horror speedrun community made an updated uh, DLL or something to uh, speed this up. Oops, forgot about this one. Now, for this one, they tell us that we need to kill the zombies. Oh, come on. But we only need to kill that one. And now we got Captain, Skeeter, uh, Charles, and I cannot remember the woman's name. But they're going to be our friends for the rest of the game. Anyway, we're going to use the gun a bit more. A bit more in this level. Not a whole lot, but more than the last level. And that was not at all. So... The goal, f the issue with this level is that our nice fellas in that little house over there, they want to get out of boat and get out of here. However, the boat is broken, so we need a gas tank, we need some wires, and we need a fuse. Or maybe it's not wires, maybe it's like a fuel line or something. But we gotta go grab those three things for them, and we just have to go explore this whole little seaside town for it. Uh, step one to all that is getting captured by the mannequin zombie, or whatever you want to call it. We respawn in here. Um, something scary living under the floor. I hope we don't have to run into that scary little monster. How many bullets do I have, actually? Um, I'm probably going to go grab a few safety bullets along the way. I think there's some. There is actually... For that scary monster that popped up, I forget who it was, but somebody was able to grab the key and get out without the uh, zombie heads keeping you in there. But... It's only like a second or two time save, and I've, I've never gotten it. So we're in the gas station. We grab the gas canister, and we are getting out of here. Let's get some safety bullets. And now there's two more places we got to get, but first, let's get past these fellas. One of the things I don't like is that zombies will oftentimes hide right behind doors. And there's and like there's no way to know that there's a zombie behind there unless you've played the game before. Yeah, you can actually get past that little head. I I, I can't do it. I'm bad at it. Again, we got some more of these cultists. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, no, yeah, I'll, I'll take it back. The scary monster that was chasing us down the hallway in the last level, we can actually see him again in this level. So I will um, I'll I'll get a good look at him for y'all. All right, we got a few more bullets. All right, so we got the gas can, and now we want to go to the little medical area to go get ourselves a nice little fuse. Um, I did some experimentation in this little area up here for some some more death warps. I was really trying to find some you know good ways to like get rid of the knives and you know have the game warp us to where where we need to go, but I kind of goofed it. Um, scary little jump scare. Got a little key here. I'm sure there are actually some better... Uh, I'm sure there are some hidden um, death warp mechanics or death warp abuses that we have yet to find. So if you are a glitch hunter, this is a good game to look. Just find out where we're supposed to spawn. And uh, yes, I'm into cool shit. I want to kill this guy because he's going to get in the way later. Um, this little medical area gets pretty cramped. It... Um, after we get out of here, if we don't kill that zombie. Yeah, he would pop out right there, and you gotta dodge around him. Anyway, we got the two little codes to open up this area, and we do that, and these uh, little corpses are gonna get erect in a moment. <laughs> you, you, thought I, you thought that was a dick joke? Get out of here, idiots. These guys, this zombie up here, I do not like these ones. What zombie walks like that? They purposely are, like, walking, leaning really far back so that you cannot shoot them in the head. They are obnoxious to deal with. I hate them. Uh, yeah, we're leaving them be. That cool little zombie. 
um coming up here i don't even know if it's a zombie it's like a little i don't know golem no wait Go golem golem's the lord of the rings guy right yeah what's this thing oh ah! he's okay we um, that, that, that was a good enough look uh, i'm like <laughs> that was too close for me with the debate yeah viewership jumped by 50 percent after they were expecting a little dick over there if we wanted to go that way we could get a shotgun but the cool thing about this game, well, cool, not cool, one of the game mechanics for this game is that it doesn't really care what you got or didn't get in the last level. Um, it'll just give it to you in the next one. So we don't need a shotgun for this level, so we can just skip past it. We'll get it in the next one. Um, I have a moment to explain this. Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll save it for when we actually see it, but... What we need to do now is we go into the little barn and use that to get into the locked house next to us. Where is it? There he is. Excuse me. I have fallen off of this board in the past, and it is not fun. It's like, what, a 20, 30 second time loss? Something silly like that. So now we're going to go to the basement, and we are going to get the fuel lines? Fuel lines, wires, whatever it is that they need, we're getting it. Um, where are they? What is it actually? Hose? I was wrong. So, for this section, we're going to try and leave. And we're locked in until we kill these heads. However, we only need to kill one... Oh, they... oh shit! Oh! Oh, I think it was that one. Usually he runs to the back corner, so I don't know why he decided to come for me that time. But there's, like, several down there. But that's the only one that you need to kill to open up the door. So here's something cool. I'm getting to a little, there's a little cutscene right here where the main bad guy calls these, I don't know, demon dogs, skull dogs on us. Um, and they're gonna start chasing us down. And they are, where are they? Yeah, they're back there right now. However, if we went and did the, uh, I don't know, objective order in some different way, like if I got the hose first and then the gas can last or the, uh, the fuse last, what would happen is that those dogs, for their respective spawn pots, spots, would be in front of us, and we would have to take time to shoot them. Um, so we routed out and found out that this is the one where they spawn behind you, and um, because of that, we can save a lot of time by not having to kill them. So we got everything we need, we got to talk to the nice folks, and we are getting out of here. And now we are on to the little boat, uh, boat section. Walmart smile dog. And now we're finding out that Captain is not Captain. Belinda, that's her name. I couldn't remember her last, uh, her name. Yeah, we're finding out that Captain isn't the Captain. He's like a cabin boy. Um, and we are lost at sea because he sucks at stuff. Also, I, I, I completely forgot about this. When I said we only were going to see boobs one more time, um, I completely forgot about this, even though it happens a couple times. <laughs> All right, so we're on the boat now. Um, to trigger the next little section, we gotta go talk to everybody. We gotta go talk to Stan the Man, who we will see more of later. We gotta talk to Skeeter, whose wife is dead. Um, it's kind of like Boone from Fallout New Vegas, where it's like, my wife is dead. We're gonna go talk to Captain. And now we gotta go talk to Charles and Belinda. Now, there's a soft lock that you can do right here. You know how I said, like, you can, like, talk to someone who escaped twice and then, like, get an extra, some extra distance? If you do that where you talk to Charles or Belinda and then talk to the other one before the uh, text box starts... Um, actually, I want to grab this. If you do that, um, you will soft lock the game. So after I talk to everyone, I stand in that corner to trig trigger uh, Belinda dying. And now we're being attacked by a giant shark. And you can't, even though I can see it, you can't shoot it until it gets close enough, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Bullets don't travel indefinitely. Also, even though I, like, empty out all of the uh, bullets from the gun and, like, manually put them back in, that is not how it works. We actually only knock out the empty shells. How many bullets do I have? I have four. That should be enough. Okay, I gotta be really safe. How much do I have in the shotgun? Yeah, see, we, we got the shotgun now. 
I think we're I think we're safe. This is the last time we gotta shoot it. Nice. All right. Um, we are done the little boat section, and uh, we're finding out. Well, Belinda's already dead. So if she was your favorite survivor, I apologize. You know, she she's gone. Um, but now the boat's going down, and Stan's gonna take one for the team. Um, he's going down with the ship. One of the downsides of the uh, the modification to the game that shortens the uh, I don't know the cutscenes, the little text between missions. One of the downsides is that uh, we don't actually see the shark swimming at stand at the end. It just kind of looks like he's standing there. Anyway, uh, this section is kind of I don't know. It's mostly just like a walking section. We gotta do one little thing here, uh, where we got there's a little what do you call it. A little side thing where we gotta find the key to get out of here, but not much crazy going on. We get to see some Spanish conquistadors, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Actually, wait, we gotta go talk to Susie first. Yeah, the Sphere Hunter has a cool little cameo as a zombie in uh hey, not a zombie yet, but someone just locked in this coffin. But we gotta talk to her. Hello, Susie. We are leaving. Yeah, we're not getting Susie out of there. If you come back later, she actually is out as a zombie. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't think we need to. We we don't need to save her. We don't need to let her out. So we just gotta go get a shovel. Get past these little Spanish zombies. We get the shovel. We get the key. We get out of here. Also, right when you grab that. The zombies spawned right there, and it took me a little while to get used to that. Like, I would kill the zombies, and then they would just be right there. Oh, oh I almost forgot to crouch there. All right. Actually, we don't need a gun. All right, we got the key. Uh, we can just run past everyone, and we can get out of here. Something I don't think I mentioned is that, like, if you have a gun out, you cannot interact with, like, the world around you. Like, you have to put your gun away. And it's a bit jarring at the end of the game when we have to, like, you know, keep picking up ammo and reloading and shooting. Like, I don't know. It, 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 like I said, it's a bit much, but you know what? When was the last time that you guys tried to shoot a gun and do other stuff at the same time? It doesn't really work that well. We are coming up to the end of the little island level. Um, all we got to do is read a piece of paper and then a little bonfire is going to get started and stuff. And we're going to go on to... What I think the community agrees to be the most, oh, come on. I don't know, iconic level in the whole entire game. So there's just so much going on with it. Last time I used a gun, I shot my toe off. That's the spirit. You gotta tie your shoes and then yeah, use the gun. So anyway, they took away our guns. They put us in prison. This is Biden's America. So I just want you guys to know that. This is what's happening to the Patriots. But we got no guns. We're in prison. We got to go talk to this guy right here. The little prisoner. Um, he's the new character. This is Belinda's replacement. Now, remember how we could crouch underneath zombies and, um, you know, not get hurt? Same thing for these cultists. They have guns. They do this thing where they go like, and then they shoot. Um, we can just crouch right when they shoot and they won't hit us. Now, this little section right here is really funny because I had it happen once where the doors got blasted off the walls and one of them pushed me directly into the other zombies and I just died immediately. So that is not fun. All right. So we're going to be doing a bit more shooting in here. Um, we don't... This is probably the second most shooting we've got to do in the whole level. One down. Can't get the second one. Nope. I suck. Whatever. All right. I don't think I mentioned, but the goal of this level is to free our friends who have been captured. And the first one we're going to free is nice little Charles, who is... I don't think I mentioned it, but like a man... And like a kid's body or something. I don't know. He's, it's very creepy. But we're going to talk to him. Um, and then that calls in all these other zombies to come to the area. And they're going to open up this door. Now I'm going to have to do a little movement. Put 
break this guy's ankles. Oh, and get over here and get the key to get Charles out. So we get this little key. I'm going to get some little bullets, even though I don't think I need them. Now we got to put the jukes on them one more time. Oh, scary. Yeah, like I said, all you got to do is be crouched and you're good. So Charles is free. Oh! All right, so Charles is free. I don't know why it plays a scary sound when you see him up here. So Charles is free. Um, now we are going to go free um, Skeeter. I meant to grab those shotgun shells. Oh, there was a guy right there. All right, we get out of here and we are... This section right here drives me crazy because you have to crouch under every single one of these zombies. Oh! And I always forget about... I always forget about this guy right here. He always gets me. But I practiced so much today that I haven't forgotten. Oh, I forgot to reload. All right. We're going to go free Skeeter now. Oh, shit! Matt, now this guy's... This guy's shooting me while I'm in here. All right, we got the key. Skeeter's free. Charles is free. Um, now we got to go free Captain. What? What got me? Dude, this is cheating. What happened? Oh, actually, I'm not that far back. Whatever. 1984 moment. That's, that's BS. Now, I need to go in here. And press that button, because that is going to open up our path to get out of here later on. Alright. Now, there's a very cool glitch that I set up before you guys even tuned in. You guys are going to get ready for this shit. Okay. Oh, whoopsie. Excuse me. Do I have... Yeah, I got, I got shells. I got bullets. There's no way it was the steam that killed me. I've never been killed by steam. Alright. So, we got Captain... Um, but there was a really cool door with a gargoyle next to it that we walked past earlier. And guess what? That door is unlocked now. So we get to go kill the final boss. Or the boss for the little prison section, that is. Gotta crouch under these guys. Go under here. And we need to go kill the boss. Just kidding. <laughs> we found out that if you kill, if you kill the boss, and then without closing the game, go back and play through the game again, the boss just dies immediately. So that's why that's why we had to run this game first, was because I was like, I want I wanted to do this cool little glitch. It is really cool. I'll, I'll show it off. It's scary. The heads are still alive. What you're supposed to do is shoot all the heads. Um, and then once, once you shoot them all, they all just die. And because I haven't killed all anybody in this level, really, except for those, that one guy... Um, everyone's out to kill me. Oh no! There we go. That guy somehow can attack me. Now I want to shoot these guys. Uh oh. There we go. Oh wait! No! What the hell? I don't know why that guy wasn't shooting at me. So this door right here is the one that I unlocked earlier by hitting that button. I always forget to do that one. But this time I remembered. And now, even though we didn't free uh, the prisoner with his little cardboard, you know, toilet paper cardboard dick out, even though we didn't free him, he's with us now, right? So we got Captain Skeeter, uh, Charles, and Prisoner. So y'all gotta choose your favorite characters. Y'all gotta pick your favorites. I wanna know who, who y'all like. But this little section right here, um, all we're going to be doing is doing some setup for the final stand. Toilet paper dick. He, he's, he's, a, he's a gamer. We need to go into this little uh, church here, and we got to get some guns. I don't know why it spins me around. I go through here, and that points me right back at the door where I was. So we're going to go break into the armory. Uh, I'm sure every church has an armory, but we're going in right now to get some guns. Skeeter. I like Skeeter. We got the guns. Uh, toilet paper guy, he gets a shotgun. Charles, you get a little revolver. Uh, Skeeter, shotgun. Charles died. Sorry, gamers. If if y'all if y'all picked uh 
if y'all picked uh, Charles, he's gone. So this section is the last one in the game. I'm scared. I hope you guys are scared too, because I messed this up during practice once. But this is where this is where boys become men, women become uh, w girls become women, and non-binary people become non-binary with a capital N and capital B. I think that's how it works. But in this section, you really want, like, to not lose time, you really want to count your bullets. Oh, excuse me. And you want to, like, you want to count your bullets, you want to get all the, all the bullets and stuff that you can. We're at six, right? Yeah, six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, volume warning. I have a compressor on this. I have a limiter, so it shouldn't be that bad. But, like, for some reason, Captain's voice lines are insanely loud when we go to the next section. Three. Oh, hello. Four. Five. There's more coming. We need to fall back. <laughs> it hurts so much. Yeah, there we go. That's the last shot of a dick we're going to get for this game. Uh, rest in peace, prisoner. He is out. Yeah, th then th then there's this glitch that happens occasionally. So we want to reload before the zombies get over here. The real reason that I lost during practice was I ran out of bullets. So I'm going to be extra safe. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, reload time. And now these guys come out next. You want to know why this game isn't a 10 out of 10 in my book? Because you can't shoot these explosive barrels. Watch. Yeah, see? Two, three, four. Hello? Five, six. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I didn't mean to hit reload. I wanted to switch guns. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Stop. Stop. That's my purse. I don't know you. All right. All right, we're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, even though I said I, you don't want to reload because it's slow, I keep forgetting because I'm stupid. Three, four, five. Excuse me. All right. I think we're going to the next section in a moment here. Yeah, they're supposed to explode. Okay. We can't hold any longer. Fall back to the church. Oh, my little ears. Oh, Skater, no! Skater! Well, he was in the army. Am I, am I right, fellas? Get it? All right. Whatever. All right, now it's just Captain and me, gamers. I'm going to reload my shotgun if I can. Actually, I want to pick this up. So I use my handgun mostly earlier. I think you can shoot the shotgun a lot more quickly. Because, like, the reload doesn't take as long. All right. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good here. Hello? Hello? What? Where are they? Where are they? Here we go. One. Oh, the double kill. I don't think I've ever gotten one. Yo, chat, clip it. Clip it so I can put it on my TikTok later. As far as the speed run goes, like I said, I think you just need to kill the zombies as quickly as possible. And at some point, the game will kick you to the next little area. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. I suck. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm cornered. There we go. Nice. We are doing pretty well. As long as I, I'm not dead. Come get me, you smelly-ass maggot fuckers! Uh, no more F-bombs in the whole run. I think that's the last F-bomb. <laughs> Okay, so regardless of our guns being reloaded last time, we get one last little section here. Oh, yeah, bye, Captain. We can reload before the little text box starts. So if I can hit R and reload. Okay. I think I'm all set. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. We are all set. This is the last stand. S stand. Stan. D. Shit. Oh, that's foreshadowing. Am I right? Oh, shit. All right. Um. All right. We got. We got. Am I? Out, am I out of shotgun shells? I guess I was. Damn, that sucks. 
All right, we just got to kill these zombies. Time is coming up in like um, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Uh-oh. I'm not going to... Shit, guys, when I said stand, it was foreshadowing. Stan is here. This is it. We're going to get out of here. Because he's got like, what, an M16 with the noob tube? Yo, one's in chat if you guys used the noob tube back in the day. All right, time's coming up in five seconds or so. Whenever the screen fades to black and time. Oh, let's go, gamers. That was Night at the Gates of Hell. Um, that last mission I was worried about because, um, man, there, like, there's like some soft locks that can happen where you like get stuck aiming down the site and then the zombies get you. Um, the prison section... That couldn't have gone much better, except for that BS where I died for no reason because the game said, no, nah, Tope's doing too well on this. <laughs> um, yeah, good stuff. Um, I will be back in just a few moments for some blood wash, but I think we have a short little intermission. So take, yep, take it away. That's right. Yep. So much like Tofa just said, he will be back momentarily to run blood wash any percent. But before we transition into our intermission... I'm just going to announce that uh, we actually have a little follower goal for today's event. Uh, if the channel can reach 125 followers, currently at 107, by the time Zom Slays finishes his Nun Massacre glitchless run, he will then run Nun Massacre any, any percent, which is a much shorter but just ridiculous run. So that's the goal. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back in just a moment with some blood wash.